Welcome to this demo of the Quantal client released in August 2014. So here we connect to a Hadoop cluster managed by Cloudera Manager and running on AWS. We actually started by opening our model and you saw how Quantcell installed the libraries required to take advantage of the available cluster services. Here you see the machines or nodes that we are employing on the remote cluster and the services running include the Harp file system, Impala and Spark, which we will use during the demonstration. The first thing we do is to wrap a table structure around a text file located on HDFS on our cluster using Impala. This enables us to analyze the file using SQL expressions and uh, you can see in the spreadsheet we are using Groovy as our language of choice for these cells and uh, here we continue the, ana the analysis in cell C4 and have Impala group rows in the CSV file according to color spectrum and then we import the res results into a double array called list declared here and seen in, in this cell C4. We place the array in cell C5 and then we locate a template from the Google Charts homepage that we can use to visualize the results of the analysis performed earlier using Impala on the, on the servers. A bubble chart seems to be the right thing to use here and we simply copied a template available on the charts homepage and added it slightly to point to our double array in cell C5 and then it was ready to use as seen here in cell C6. Now all the amazing charts from the Google Charts JavaScript library are available to us for use in Quantcell. All we have to do to view the chart is to double click on the cell containing the HTML definition in cell C6 and here it is, here's the chart displaying the data analyzed by Impala on our servers. Now let's look at lambda expressions from Java 8 and use these to continue our analysis of the text table. This is new in Java 8 and since Quantcell is supported by Java 8, lambda expressions can now be used in cells in the Quantcell spreadsheet. Here we take the list in cell C5 and process it first as a stream. Then we filter it using a simple lambda boolean expression and then create a one-dimensional array of values, again defining the map using a lambda expression. Finally, we return the summary statistics object. Apache Spark is another service running on our cluster like seen earlier. It's an excellent service for in-memory analysis and we can use Spark to analyze the text file as well. So let's do that. Here we double click on, our, on the Cloud Data Manager. We see that Spark is running on the, on the Yarn or Hadoop cluster. We can, we can look at the Master Web UI and see that we're running three nodes, uh, nine gigabytes and six cores for this service. Since the algorithms we will be using are written in Quantcell, we need to have a way to ship those algorithms to the cluster. Cell E15 is responsible for deploying the algorithms or transformations which are located in cells E12, E13 and E14. The algorithms are defined as input into the tools expression which packages the algorithms into a jar file in Spark, we create what's called resilient distributed data sets. And here we've taken our text file and wrapped it into a resilient data set. We've applied the first algorithm seen in cell E12. We apply the second algorithm applied in E13. That's a simple Boolean filter. And then we map the values to a double array. So the highlighted command here, CAS, enables us to store the resilient distributed dataset, or RDD, in memory for further analysis. Since the resulting dataset is relatively small, with only about 1.5 million entries, it is possible to retrieve the set back into the client and play with it in the client, or like we're doing in 
cell C15 have Spark perform the analysis such as creating the histogram seen in the cell. In order to view the histogram created by the Spark engine on the server side, we'll view it as a, uh, as a double array and then double click on it to actually see the values in the using the full value system in QuantCell. So here it is, here we've double clicked on the cell and these are the this is the binning from the from the spark. Using spark in this way is extremely efficient since all the heavy lifting happens on the server side in memory. Earlier we used Google Chart for visualization in QuantCell, but another extremely powerful system for visualization is the D3 JavaScript library and we will simply search for a template online to use in QuantCell and have plot a histogram of the results that we created. Here it is, uh, we'll just copy it into QuantCell and edit it slightly to point to our data instead of the generated data used in the online template. We'll take the text and copy it into cell C17. We'll we need to look for the, uh, the library we're using, make sure that uh, we're using the, uh, the D3 library, here it is. And then we need to replace the values used in the template with the values from our analysis located in cell C14, seen here as the, as the array we retrieved back from from the Spark cluster. So here we added the, the values statement, replace it with a reference to the values in C14, and then we're going to change the, the domain, from, since our values are not from 0 to 1, they're from 0 to maybe 700. We're also going to increase the number of pins a little bit, uh, use let's say 24 instead of um, 20 and then we're ready. Now when we double click on this we we see the uh, chart it's displayed using the full value system in QuantCell after being processed by the efficient Nashorn engine in Java. Finally to wrap this up we want to thank you for watching this demonstration and remind you that you can visit uh, quantcell.com for more information or contact us directly.